A buffer overflow is a type of attack where a certain section of memory is being overwritten. That certain section of memory is being overwritten with more data than normally would fit into that space. We're overflowing the amount of space normally expected to store information in that memory. So it spills over into other areas of the memory. And if you spill it over in just the right way with just the right information, you can then create a few problems with your applications and your operating systems. The developers of these applications ideally would perform something called bounds checking so that the buffer overflows when they are attempted would be stopped before they would ever overflow the normal section of memory that's what that's really being expected. But the bad guys are looking for places where this bounds check is not in place. And that's where they can take advantage of these buffer overflows. This is obviously, as it sounds, not something simple to do. It takes a lot of research and a lot of work. A buffer overflow sometimes has unexpected results. Sometimes it crashes machines. But sometimes it gives you access to information you normally would not have access to. This is uh, something that's very, very useful if you're able to repeat it. That's what the bad guys are looking for, is not just bad programming and not just the ability to do a buffer overflow overflow, but do it in a way where you can repeat it every time and have exactly the same outcome so that you can control the way things are going. And if they can own your system, this is a very, very common way to go about doing that. When we talk about overflowing memory, we're talking about this type of situation where you might have two variables in memory. One is a variable A that contains a string of information. One is a variable B, which contains a bit of text, a bit of numbered information, 1979. And here's the hexadecimal equivalent of those. Well, let's say you wanted to fill up this variable A, but instead of using these eight bytes that we have here, we actually put the word excessive in there, E-X-C-E-S-S-I-V. And then our buffer overflow of that E has fallen into the area of memory where the variable B is kept. And so you can see the contents of B were changed because of the buffer overflow that occurred when we filled in all of the data for variable A. Let's try using this in a more practical term. Let me show you how the bad guys are using buffer overflows of our operating systems to gain access to information they should not have. On my desktop, I have two operating systems running right now in a virtual environment. I'm running VirtualBox. One of those operating systems is Windows XP. This is a relatively unpatched version of Windows XP. I'm going to perform a buffer overflow against the Windows XP operating system and show you what happens. This device is 192.168.1.26. The other operating system I'm running is a Linux machine. It's running Ubuntu, and I have a framework here called the Metasploit framework. You can download this yourself at metasploit.org. This is a framework full of exploits that I can use to hit against other machines and see if they are susceptible to these exploits. And the one that I'm going to run here is an exploit for Windows. It is an RPC exploit. And it is one of the worst buffer overflow exploits that Windows ran into. This is a number of years ago. But it's one that was very, very bad in what it did. It exploited a stack buffer overflow in the RPC SS service. And this is one that affected many, many, many different Windows systems. And at the time, it was a very bad exploit. Now, it has since been patched. If you have a service pack or you have this particular hotfix patch on your computer, then you're not susceptible to it. And hopefully these days, that's so long ago that uh, hopefully you wouldn't have that on your, your system today. I'm going to run a shell reverse TCP on this system. And I'm going to choose which machine I would like to run this on, 192.168.1.26. There are obviously a number of other advanced capabilities of Metasploit. We're just going to run a very basic version. We're going to run it in the console. Metasploit starts to begin that particular vulnerability, runs the exploit, and now I'm at a shell of this Windows computer. The Windows computer is still running. It's still running its start menu. You could be doing the things you would normally do on that Windows machine. But now that I've run that exploit, I have access to this computer. And I can run a directory. It's as if I'm there at the shell of this Windows computer. So you can see having that particular vulnerability there of that buffer overflow it gives me access to this Windows computer that I really should not have. And obviously, you can see how these buffer overflows are something you should absolutely keep your systems updated, keep them patched, so that other people can't take advantage of those.